we recently switched out the pressure tank in our water system, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, spend just a little time talking to you about water pressure tanks and getting the right size, and also some of the other components that go along with your pressure tank, just in case you're not familiar with it. But the, the big thing here that I think is important for, for most of you is the size of the pressure tank. First of all, what is the pressure tank? Well, it's sometimes called a bladder tank or a household diaphragm tank. And basically this tank is what keeps the water system pressurized whenever your water pump is not running. So most of you that live in a rural area, your water source is a well and you have an electric pump that's pumping water into your house. But you don't want that pump to have to be running all the time. And so what happens is the pump runs for a period of time, it builds up some water in this tank and builds up pressure, and then the pump turns off and this tank has a, a rubber diaphragm, it's not rubber, but some kind of flexible material that, that is a diaphragm, and it exerts pressure on the water and this is what keeps your water system pressurized whenever the pump is not running. Just think of blowing up a balloon with your mouth if you take your finger off the end, the air shoots out because of the pressure of that tension uh, of the rubber being stretched. And it's the same principle here. So what's hap the, the rationale behind, at least my rationale, behind sizing the pressure tank is I want to get the largest one that I can either afford or fit into the spot where it needs to go. A lot of times lately I'm seeing people use <clears throat> really small pressure tanks, and I don't like that idea. Uh, at least for most people, I think it's a bad idea, especially if you are interested in homesteading, uh, living off the grid, or, or this kind of thing. A larger pressure tank makes a lot of sense to me, because for one thing, having a larger pressure tank means that your pump, your electric pump, is cycling on and off fewer times. That means that your pump is going to last longer and it's going to use less electricity because every time that electric pump turns on it takes a great big surge of electricity to get it started. Once it's running then it cruises at a much lower amount of power. It takes a lot less power to keep it cruising than it does to get it started. So the fewer times that we start that pump we're going to save a little power there. Uh, and so the it's easier on the pump also if it's running, uh, you know, for a longer period of time and turning on fewer times. And also the tank itself should last longer because uh, what wears these things out typically is the friction of that rubber diaphragm up against the, the metal in the tank and the stretching action. And so every time it's doing this, it's putting more wear and tear on the tank. So if you have a larger tank, then it's doing it's going through a complete cycle fewer times and so our previous tank was a much smaller tank I believe it was a 40 some odd gallon tank and when I say 40 some odd gallon tank that doesn't mean that it actually holds 40 some odd gallons that means that if the entire tank were were hollow and there was nothing in there then the entire volume of the tank would be 40 I think it was 44 gallons something like that um, but uh, so we actually stepped up to a 86 gallon tank and if I had had the space I would have liked to have put in the uh, I think it's hundred and some odd gallon version which was the next size up and uh, the, the bigger the better uh, also another advantage of a large tank is and, and this goes whether you're on the grid or off the grid this is especially true for those of you who are on the grid if you have a really large pressure tank and you experience a blackout that only lasts for several hours, you have a much better chance of making it through that blackout without running out of water if your tank is really large, because then that's that much more water that's sitting here. And so there's a lot of advantages to it. Uh, so if you do find that your pressure tank is wearing out, and they do wear out periodically, then I would definitely recommend stepping up to as large a tank as you can. You'll know that your pressure tank is wearing out, uh, I'm sure there's a variety of ways, but the way that we knew it was that our pressure tank, or our water pump was having to turn on very frequently. It got so bad that we would only have to, we would um, flush the toilet a couple of times and the water pump would turn on again. It was ridiculous. And, um, and so what a difference it has made to put in a new tank 
that actually works and a large tank. Now our water pump only turns on maybe a couple of times a day, something like that. Yes, it does take longer to fill this tank up than it did the smaller tank, but it's only turning on for a couple of times a day. So that's really good. Um, as far as brand, this was one of the cheaper brands. We got this at Home Depot, and it is made by Well X Troll. That's W E L L dash X, the letter X dash T R O L L. They're one of the best names in the pressure tank industry, and so this was kind of like their low end uh, brand that Well X Troll makes. Their I don't know what you'd say homeowner quality brand, and I. If you know, if you've been around us long, you know that I like to buy quality, and I generally do buy quality whenever I can. But the price difference, I, I always have to, you know, I, I have to weigh cost versus benefit. And in this particular instance, the cost difference between this and the full-blown Well Extrol uh, tank of the same size was so significant. If, if memory serves me right, I think the Well X Troll brand tank was like almost three times the cost of this one. And so if money were no object, sure, I would have gone that route. But considering that, and considering that we bought a really large tank that isn't going to be cycling very much, I decided to go ahead and, and go with this brand. And in 10 or 15 years, I can let you know if that was a good decision or a bad one. But you know, this, this tank only costs, I think it was less than 300 bucks, 200 and some odd dollars, if I recall right. So anyhow, that was a little rationale behind this. Uh, get the largest that you can. Um, just if you're not familiar, let me tip the camera down a little bit here so that you can see some of the, uh, some of the other uh, items that go along with a pressure tank. So right here is the pressure switch. And let me just grab a screwdriver real quick so you can see how this works. Sometimes it helps to understand these things. You want to keep this the cap screwed on, screwed down all the time so little fingers can't get in here because this is live uh, high voltage electricity. And so what this is, it's um, the switch that controls when your water pump is running and when it's not. And so when the uh, when the pressure it's connected into the the T that goes into the tank, and so there's a little pressure. It, it uses pressure on a spring here where it's able to sense what the pressure of the water is, and when the pressure gets down to a certain point, this um, these points will connect. You'll hear a click, and it'll snap closed, and that is connecting the points where it's now sending electricity to your water pump. And then these points will stay connected, sending electricity to the water pump until the water pressure gets up to the set point that you've set on here, and then the points will snap apart like they are right now. And, uh, and so that's, you can, tr uh, sometimes you can trigger it manually with that lever if you need to. So like I said, you want to keep that screwed down so that little hands can't get in there and get electrocuted. And um, the other, a couple other things, this is the uh, pressure relief valve, and this is important. Um, you know, I think with, with our um, water pump, because of the location of it and the size of it and everything, I don't think that that water pump could get the pressure in here high enough to where it would burst anything. So I don't know that we really have to have that, but it's a good piece of safety equipment just to make sure that nothing ruptures. You don't want the rubber in here rupturing or anything like that. So if the pressure gets too high, the water will shoot out here until the pressure is relieved. And this is useful for draining the water out of your tank if you leave in the winter time, that sort of thing. Of course, the, val the pressure gauge, this is a check valve or a one-way valve. And basically, with, with any of your wells, the pump is going to be down in the well with a submersible pump. And so that means that the, uh, the pressure in this tank is pushing down on this and you have all of this pressure pushing out, exerting on the inside of the pipe, pushing all the way out to the well and then down the well, and you end up with all the weight of that water on top of the pump pushing down on it, plus the pressure that's in this tank. And so this uh, check valve basically relieves some of that pressure. It stops when, whenever the water is not pumping from the pump. Whenever the pump is not actively running, this check valve closes, 
and it stops this tank from exerting any more pressure on your water pump wherever it might be located. So I don't know if <clears throat> if that made sense or not. I hope it did. But just think of this as a way that it's uh, putting less wear and tear. It's making life easier on your water pump. And then just one other important piece of equipment is a uh, cutoff valve so that if you had a pipe break in your house or a uh, valve on the toilet malfunctioned or something or other where you were having water flooding out, you can come over here, turn this off, and boom, it's disconnected and there's no more water going through the pipes. And it's important that this is on <clears throat> the side of the tank that's going to the house. So the, the water pump on this particular system, the, the water pump is this way and it's coming in through here, and if we were to put the cutoff valve over here, it wouldn't accomplish a whole lot because all this water in this tank would still be able to get out to the house. So we want this over on this side. And then these are called unions, and basically it makes it very easy to replace this tank or to take it out if we had to service it for some reason. You can just unscrew it here and unscrew it here, and the whole system here will disconnect so that you don't have to come in here and actually cut pipes. So anyhow, that's a little bit about how all of this works, and I hope that was helpful to you. And, you know, it's, it's uh, one of those things that you don't think about a whole lot, but uh, I really am an advocate for whenever you upgrade an appliance, be uh, systematic about it, be proactive, think about what your goals are for the future, and choose carefully and choose wisely. And if you keep doing that for a period of years, before you know it, you're going to have most of your appliances upgraded to uh, to where you need them to be, to maybe go off the grid or something like that. So, you know, not, not a huge deal here, but every little bit counts. And so make your, your choices wisely, and you'll be way ahead in the future.